sure they would be lost. Yep. Here's Let's another one. To God be the glory on page Psalms four.
Lincoln, Nebraska, and Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. I've done that today before yesterday. Yeah. And it's it just it, it, mm. people need to look and come to the realization that the Bible's trying to tell you. The man is still in charge. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. He'll wipe this place out in the blink of an eye. People just don't they need to start thinking. They need to start turning to the Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Okay, you know, these the, the guys say events like this, brother, here or over in uh, somewhere else in the world. Yeah. It'd be a volcano or whatever. You know, uh, just as he's pointing to the Lord. Pray, pray yeah. to God. Pray. God will take care of these people. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. All right. Charlotte, glad to see you back. Amen. Glad to be back. Yeah, we're going to pray. Thank y'all again for the prayers. My sister's doing great. I come down back home yesterday about 3 o'clock, and she wanted to stay at home, so I left her. She called me today. She said, Charlotte, I'm cleaning up my bedroom and getting all my clothes out, suitcases and everything, and hanging them back up. I said, well, that's good, Lord Jane. I said, it's good to do things like that. Yeah. She says, yeah, but says I have to keep sitting back down and getting back up because she's very weak. Right. But she says, guess what? I said, what? She says, I drove to Walmart today. Wow. She said, you did? Hey, yeah. She right. says, yeah. I says, I wanted some tomatoes, and I went and got some. <laughs> the first time she drove since February. Wow. The first of February when she got real sick. Yeah. So I thank God for it. Praise sure. God. And I Amen. thank God for helping me. To and help me help her through it. Yeah. Man. She yeah. is doing great. She's yeah. weak. She's got a long way. Well, I don't say a long way. I say she's got a ways to go, but right. she's doing great, and she's beginning to understand she's got to do it herself now. Right. And she's she got to take care of herself that right. Robert's not there no more to help her. Right, right. And see, her stepdaughter also passed away three weeks before her husband did, so... They had a double dose of it, both of them, I don't know, mm -hmm. but it hit poor Jake harder, I think. I'm not sure. And her being sick, too, right. in that hospital. She's doing great, thank God. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord for that. Glad to hear that. You and sure. me both. Yeah, that's an answer to prayer, isn't it? Yes, Amen. it's an answer to a prayer. Okay, who else has one tonight? Anybody else have one tonight you'd like to mention? All right. Charles, you got any you'd like to speak Just thought of those that are still on my heart. We had uh, lost a classmate this week. I might have mentioned that this morning. That's trouble. I start to get old. I realize now why Mom and Daddy had always looked at the obituaries in the paper because uh, we're at the age where uh, that's everybody we grew up with. Yeah. Amen. So, uh, remember that family. Uh, good, we had a wonderful service this morning. So Amen. we thank the Lord for showing up and showing out this morning. Amen. Amen. That's great. All right. Yes, one more. Um, I just want all of us to pray for uh, a few people uh, that have been coming into the church that's not been here in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm not going to call them out, but I'm going to call them out because God knows who they are. Right. Um, and just pray that they will find the need to come back to church. Amen. Uh, some young, some old, uh, and that they'll come back into church. Um, right. And just pray that we'll see them next Sunday for Giving Wednesday night would be great. That's a good prayer to be right. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking about that today myself. Uh, There's a couple of them I need to call them and tell them we're going to come with our rope like, you know, Roy Rogers did and yes. corral them up and bring them in. <laughs> Better to come on their own, or we'll just pull them in with the rope. We've had a couple young ones that right. we knew to salvation. Yes. Um, that I think personally that maybe the devil may be working on them. Right. And that maybe they may be sliding back a little bit. And right. That maybe, hopefully, that with prayer, they will come back into church. Amen. With their parents and grandparents. Yes. And so, with prayer, maybe we can get them back in there this coming Sunday. Yes. So, uh, Let's pray for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I, anyone else want to mention one tonight? Uh, 
Yes, Cheryl. Yeah. yeah. Um, keep praying for my cousin Wilbur. I went up there to see him today. Uh-huh. And he's got fluid on his stomach real bad. It's uh-huh. way out there with fluid. Uh-huh. And the doctor said if he, they didn't get it off, then that would hinder on what he's going to do. And so tomorrow, so I don't know what the doctor's going to do tomorrow. They're going to have some more, run some more tests. Right. And his blood pressure dropped down, I think, real, real low, under 100 on both ends. Right. And uh, when I left, it was just 107 over 44. So um, the doctor had come in and put him on something else to get his blood pressure to come up, but that's as high as it has gone. Right. So keep praying for him that they'll do what they need to do to get him back straight. And, I don't know what they're going to do or what tests they're going to run tomorrow, but he does have heart trouble. Right. He's had several heart attacks, and they've had to bring him back several times. So. Right. Just keep him in your prayer. Bless his heart. Well, we sure will. They're sure. thinking about a face maker, but they don't know if they if he can wear one or not. Right. Okay. Keep that one in prayers. Linda, you want to share something? Well, we went through so many this morning, and most of you were here and heard, and so I'm not going to go through those again. But continue praying for all of these people, and especially the people that have pulled away from the church, the young people, the not the youth. Well, they may be, but, you know, the next generation of that's pulling away. Right. And uh, I do have a thing on my heart. I have a... Uh, great, great nephew, niece, niece, that the devil's after. She was saved as a child. Right. And has been in church all of her life. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, there's someone at work that she's listening to instead of uh, listening to the Lord. Goodness. And they, they're studying the Old Testament the New Testament, that Jesus is not God. Mm -hmm. And that it is a sin to be calling him God. And Mm -hmm. there's so much that the devil's just pulling her in. Right. And Lord, pray for her. Her name is Pam. 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 Okay. But also in our Sunday school lesson today, it was about people pulling away, and it also mentioned two apparently well-known preachers. I don't, I didn't know the name, but one of them had a mega church. Yeah. And he's decided he's not a Christian anymore. Oh. And then another man that had trained at the Moody Bible College. Right. He's decided that he's not a Christian anymore. Good man. So, what have they been teaching the people? Yeah. For all these years, if they, they they said reading the Bible and, and what it tells to be a Christian, they're no longer than this. This one fellow that's from the mega church, he's divorcing his wife of nineteen years, and he's renouncing his Christian that he's a Christian. And we, if we don't have Jesus, we don't have. That's right. You hear on these. So pray for pray for these <clears throat> folks and yes. thank the Lord for this young, young man, this good little boy, and all of the folks that you have touched, Lord. Amen. And the little, little old attendants and all. Yes. I, I, I think that's where I'm going to go tonight. Okay. Thank you, Lord, that I know you, Lord, and you know me. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yeah. That's kind of like the old fellow. He was a, uh, he'd get up and testify. He was a testifier. Every, about every service, he'd get up and testify. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. God, you've been so good to me. And uh, he came down with sugar, about sugar diabetes. And so everybody said, well, he'll never testify now. And sure enough, he's the first one you hooked up. He said, Lord, sure is good to be saved. He said, it's so sweet to be saved. He said, it's so sweet I done turned a tuber. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I done turned a tuber. Oh, boy. So it is the best life you can live is live for Jesus. Yes. 
I know Satan tries his best to lure us away from that, but it is the best for sure. Okay, how about unspoken tonight? Unspoken? All right. Uh, Don, won't you lead us tonight, if you will? Lord, we we'll thank you for this time to come together and worship you. Lord, we we'll thank you for the great day you've given us. Amen. Lord, and the many people that come and, and worship today, Lord, and all the churches around. Lord, we just pray that you lay on their heart to come back, not just on Sunday morning, but all the time, Lord. Yes. Just some that we love and we're praying for them. Amen. And, uh, Lord, just give this message now and maybe something we can stick in our hearts, Lord, and just carry with us and share with other people, Lord, and help us not to. Not to be slack about testifying and witnessing. I know that I'm guilty of that myself sometimes, Lord, but I just pray that however it goes, whatever crowd I'm in, I'll at least do something that will tell people that I, I love the Lord and He loves me. Amen. Thank you for all you do. Bless us. We have God in your head. All you do, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Donna. Okay, the only announcement we have coming up is the baptismal service. I looked out there today. There's about six or seven. And that will make a good baptismal service. Uh, we'll get us a date set up for that and get it with all the ones who are going to be baptized. Heard about a major. He was assigned to a new office on a military base. And he's kind of showing off, thinking he's big shot now. And while he was working to set up his office, a private knocked on the door. Well, the major quickly picked up the phone and motioned for the private, come on in. And on the phone, the major said, Yes, General, I think that's an excellent idea. There was nobody on the phone. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, No, sir, that'll be fine. You feel free to call me anytime, General. I'm glad I can help. Yes, sir, I sure will. Give my best to your family. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. And as the major hung the phone up, he turned to the private and he said, What can I do for you, private? And the private kind of sheepishly said, well, sir, I'm here to hook up your telephone. <laughs> Watch out, you might get in big trouble. All right, let's go ahead and take the offering up here. Man, if y'all come to the front, we'll receive our Sunday night offering. And Brother Jerry, you lead us if you will. I'll be right there. Take your time. Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you just for another opportunity to be in your church tonight, Lord. Amen. I think I say that for everybody sitting here, Lord. Yes. Lord, thank you so much for all you do for us, Lord. Most of all, for giving, giving your son to us, Lord, and sending him down here to lead your life and try to get as many people to understand who he is, Lord, and then him giving his life up for us, Lord, so we may know we have a home in eternity, Lord. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for the ones that are here tonight. Amen. Lord, I just ask all the precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jerry. Oh, 
one of the points I had was just that uh, when, when your life gets turned upside down and the world and the devil comes against you, that's when it's most important yeah. to be led by the Spirit of God because how we react may influence, well, no, it will influence uh, either for the good or the bad, them that are lost. That's right. So you may have noticed right there before uh, church started, we fooling around with that thing. They sent me a picture from work. Somebody out of their head got off, run all over my water coming into the plant. And I got water shooting 100 feet in the air here. I got pretty pictures. It looks like a fountain. But what it means is I'm going to try to sing this song. Bless <laughs> God. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see. And hopefully they'll get fixed. And hopefully nobody will have to be out of work tomorrow. But no matter what happens, he's in control. Amen. I need to just learn to let him have it. So uh, pray for us as we sing. We'll try to.
Chris, doesn't he? Yes, he yeah. Proves his love in many ways every day. I'd like you to take your Bible, turn to 3rd John tonight, the little epistle of 3rd John. We've been through 1st John. Last week we went through 2nd John. Tonight, the Lord help and the Lord willing, we're going to go through the 3rd epistle of John. There's three individuals in this passage. Two of them are godly men. One of them, John says, I'm going to have to take care of this guy because he's trying to have all the preeminence in the church. And the preeminence goes to Jesus Christ. It doesn't go to an individual. And so we read it here in third, third John. We just pick it up and read the first few verses. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Now, Gaius is a wonderful Christian man. I call him the beloved disciple. And he says here, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And these are the ones that he had been able to win to Christ. And the churches that he had helped start were getting converts in. And so it, it's just a blessing to see somebody else get saved after you get saved. And uh, nothing like it. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll look at this passage. Father, we come tonight to ask you to help us as we study this Last little epistle of the epistles of John. Lord, I pray that it would help us in our Christian walk, that we would learn what this little book's all about. Lord, we think about these 14 little verses, and yet they're power packed, and they have so much truth in them. And I pray that you would teach us things that would help us to be more like Jesus, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. John's the writer of this little epistle. And he addresses three people in it. Two are godly saints of God. An example of what a Christian is supposed to be like. But one of the characters is a dictator. And John has some stern words for him. So with that in mind, let us explore this third epistle of John as John commends two and condemns one. But notice number one, Gaius. He's the beloved disciple. That's why you read in verse number one, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Now John is writing this letter uh, to a well-beloved man by the name of Gaius. And well-beloved is significant, carries the idea of dearly loved. And so we can say that here's a man that was dearly loved, and very, very well thought of, the elder would be the mature Christian and the apostle John. So John loved this man dearly, which again shows us John is practicing what he preached in the first <coughs> epistles of John when he kept saying, love the brethren, love the brethren. A sign that you're saved is that you have a love <coughs> of the brethren and that you want to keep the commands of the word of God. This letter gives us an important glimpse into the life of the early church Third John addresses Gaius and about the need of showing hospitality to traveling preachers and other believers. It also warns against a would-be church dictator. But notice we see in this <coughs> verse, he says in that passage to the elder, to the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Now immediately we're told Gaius was sound in his doctrine. He loved him in the truth of the Lord. And he accepted the deity of Christ. God uh, is come down, came down in the form of a man, but he remained 100% God and 100% man at the same time. And Gaius stood for that truth. And not only did he stand on that truth, he worked for that truth. So here's a man that worked, and he worked in love. He manifested love. You might... <coughs> think if you're going to act right, that's the way that we need to be acting, is act in love. 
because it goes a long ways into speaking to somebody else. We have no further information about Gaius. He is someone whom John dearly thinks of. Perhaps Gaius shared his home and hospitality with John because in those days that's how they would take care of their traveling missionaries and their preachers and their pastors when they came through the area. They would let them stay in the house with them. And he may have had John in his house at some time in previous travels of John. And if so, John would have appreciated his actions because traveling <coughs> preachers depended on hospitality of the members of the church to survive in the ministry. Then in verse number 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. John wants more than anything else that Gaius would be well physically just as he is spiritually. He is prospering in his spiritual walk, but there was some kind of a physical thorn in the flesh, something that was keeping him down physically. And John said, I hope that you get rid of that. I hope that God takes that out of your life and restores your physical health as he has your spiritual health. And I have found a lot of times, spiritual health has a lot to do with physical health, and physical health has a lot to do with spiritual health. It works both ways. And then John says here in verse number 2, Beloved, I wish you above all things to you would prosper and be in health, and notice that your soul would prosper. John wants more than anything to know that Gaius was well, to be in good health. Perhaps this man was ill. Nonetheless, his inner soul was prospering. Verse number 3, For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. John is thrilled to know this man is walking in the truth of the word of God. He's one of his converts. I believe he had one guest to the Lord in his life. Some other brothers and sisters came to John and told him, Hey, that Gaius is full of the truth of the word of God. He is on fire for the Lord. He's walking in the principles of that truth. And you ought to thank God for one of your converts that's walking with the Lord. That's right. The phrase indicates the Christians continually praise Gaius' obedience to the fundamentals of the faith. His spiritual reputation was well known. He walked in truth. His walk matched his talk. His reputation for practicing what he preached was exemplary. And John's commendation of him is one of the greatest given in the New Testament. John really does encourage him. Really builds this man up, Gaius. Since this commendation centers not only on the fact that he knew the truth, but he faithfully practiced the truth. Gaius' actions were in stark contrast to the next man we're going to see. His name is Diotrephes. He had a negative reputation. But Gaius is a wonderful Christian man, a beloved disciple of the Lord. Now many of these traveling evangelists and missionaries reported to John the graciousness of Gaius. They said when you go to the church where Gaius is a member and one of the leaders, he will bring you in his house and he will entertain you while you're there. In that day, they didn't put traveling preachers in Howard Johnson's or the Ramada Inn or the La Quinta or whatever inn they had. They didn't have anything like that. And uh, if they did, they probably would have put them there to give some privacy. But they didn't. And I believe, as you look at the little inns of the Roman Empire, they were flea-bitten places of dirt and sometimes very sinful with prostitution. So the custom of the day was to take the preachers and the missionaries and put them in the homes of the members of the church. And they would look after these men. And so he says in verse number 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. My children are the beneficiaries of John's ministry. He had probably led Gaius to Christ. He had led many to Christ. John says his greatest joy in the world was to see his converts walking in the ways of the Word of God. And the best thing that can happen to anyone is that they come apart when you see them coming to the church and growing in the Lord. So don't ever give up on anybody. You never know when God's going to get a hold of that person's heart and 
they may just say, you know, I've been putting it off too long. I'm going to go to church this week. I've been putting it off too long. I need to be saved. You never know how God will work. So don't get upset. Don't let it get you down. Keep on keeping on for the Lord. Verse number five. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. Gaius is a wonderful brother who did well whatever he did for the people in the church. You could count on this man does a first class job. You could count on him to get the job done no matter what it was. He showed great hospitality to these strangers. He gave them a helping hand as they stayed in his home on their journey. And he shared what he had with those that needed it. He was demonstrating Christian spirit of doing God's work and sharing what he had with other people. In the early days, traveling prophets, evangelists, teachers, the brethren, they, they were helped by people like Gaius. So hospitality is a lost art. Today, we don't sit around and invite people over for meals much anymore. And, and sad to say, uh, we don't take time to really get to know the evangelists or the missionaries when they come through. And it should be something we try to put some stress on. It's active. It's much appreciated when you love those people and let them know that, that they are cared for and prayed for in the church. In fact, it's probably more important today because of our individualism, our self-centered society, there's a lot of lonely people that just wonder, does anybody really care if I live or die? And so if you want to find a lonely person like that, just let them know that you care and let them know that you'll be there for them. That may be all it takes to get them shaken out of that old self-pity because self-pity will do nothing but pull us down. Yes. Anybody in here beside the preacher ever had a pity party? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And when you get a pity party going, pretty soon you get discouraged and you get depressed and we need not be that way. So John is telling us in this second uh, and third epistle that they were deceivers that went out into the world in the second epistle. But be careful about those deceivers because they were going to teach Jesus was not God, as Linda said. Somebody had made that statement here recently. Don't support them, include, including radio ministries and TV ministries. Be sure and check them out by the Word of God. If they are studying and preaching and teaching the Word of God, thank God for them. Help them all you can. Amen. But if they're preaching another gospel and if they're getting down to the nitty gritty where right, the rubber meets the road, right down where the ball meets the bat, you just encourage them to keep on keeping on for Jesus and keep on preaching the true gospel. Look at verse number 6. Which have borne witness of thy charity before the church. The whole church noticed the love and concern Gaius had for those that came through the area and just needed a helping hand. John commends him to continue to entertain strangers in the name of Jesus Christ. And so the recipients of Gaius' hospitality had told of his love before the church where John was probably the pastor of Ephesus and sent them on their way rejoicing in the Lord. Think of verse number 7. Because that for his name's sake they went forward, taking nothing of the Gentiles. Gaius is a Jewish man. He wants to make sure the Jews take care of the preachers. He wants to make sure that none of the unsaved can say, hey, we had to look after them. They wouldn't even take care of their own. No, it's our responsibility to take care of our own. The Christians went forth in the name of Christ to spread the wonderful message of the gospel and to live according to the principles of the word of God. And the traveling missionaries neither asked nor accepted anything from non-believers because they didn't want anybody questioning their motive for preaching. God's true preachers don't preach to make a lot of money, but to express their love for God. That's what a true preacher is wanting to do. He wants to share the word. He wants to help people. He has a love in his heart for those that he works with. 
It's the church's responsibility to care for Christian workers. That should never be left to non-believers because they're not uh, uh, charged to look after the believer. The believers are to look after the believer. So he says here in verse number 8, we, are, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. John goes on to say that we ought to be winning people to Christ, helping them in their journey of life. This shows the world that we've been changed to the glory of God and that we're on the winning side and we're disciplining ourselves to follow all the commands of God as found in the Word. Those who support traveling teachers became partners in the work. Have you ever thought about this? Whenever you help a missionary, you're helping somebody on the other side of the world. You just never know. Whenever you put one of those gospel tracts out, you never know. There may be somebody from another country just visiting in our area. Read that track and get saved. Verse number 8. I wrote into the church. But now we have a new man coming in. Diotrephes, who love to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Who is this man? Diotrephes is the hateful member. This man loved to have the preeminence among the people. He had to be the big shot. He had to be number one. He wasn't even the pastor. The letter to which John is referring to was not first or second John or even this third John. It was another letter that no longer existed. John said he had tried to write the church before, but a certain evil man named Diotrephes would not receive his correspondence. Now John is going to have to deal with this man personally and straighten it out. There are some people that are just not happy unless they get something brewing or dissension is going on yeah. and they're troublemakers and John had them in his day and we see them in our day and the friends, when that happens, they try to show off and be the big shot. Proverbs says, God hates those who sow discord among the brethren. This man loved to have the preeminence. What does that word mean? He's ambitious of distinction. He loves to be number one. Yeah. Friends, let me tell you who's to be number one. Right. Jesus Christ. Amen. He's to be number one. We could say he was ambitious. He was trampling upon everybody to get to the top. And do you know anybody that's done that before? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're so ambitious. They'll run over people. They'll cut people down. They'll lie about others just to climb the pole. And then when they get to the top, they're leaning against the wrong wall. <laughs> I've seen that happen so many times. There are some in the church that you have to watch out for. They'll try to take over the whole church. They're not spiritual. Then you take somebody with you. Then you take it before the church. And then you take it before the Lord. And if they still won't repent, then that person has to be put out for discipline's sake. And that's probably what he ended up doing. Although he doesn't tell us how he handled the situation. Heard about a preacher, he parked his car in a no preaching, I mean a no parking zone. <laughs> and he's going to do some street preaching out there, amen? But <laughs> he parked his car in a no parking zone in a large city because he was short of time. He couldn't find a space with a meter in it, so he put a note under his windshield wiper and this is what it read I have circled this block 100 times if I don't park here I miss my appointment forgive us our trespasses well when he came back he found a citation and a ticket from the police officer along with a note and here's what the police officer said I circled this block for 10 years if I don't give you a ticket I lose my job lead us not into temptation <laughs> Lead us not in temptation. Previously, John had written a letter to Gaius Church, but somehow Diotrephes got his hand on it and suppressed it and probably destroyed the letter that John had written to the church. Now, all of us need to search our hearts, even the preachers. What, what's presiding in our heart? Who's number one? We need Jesus Christ yes. to be number one. He's the one that died for our sins. He's the one that was buried for our sins. And thank God, He's the one that rose from the grave triumphant. And thank God we've got a Savior today that looks after us. Verse number 10. 
Wherefore, if I come, I remember his deeds that he doeth, prating against us. That's accusing with malicious words. This man is running John down like he's a piece of trash. And then he says here, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren. He forbiddeth them that would and casteth them out of the church. Think about this. John said, I'm going to handle this problem. When I get there, this man has criticized me. He's even put certain people out of the church without being the authority of the pastor or the deacons. And so John said, I'm going to have to deal with him because of his terrible conduct. He would not receive any visitors into the church. And he forbade the congregation from bringing visitors. And he himself made sure that if they came, he ran them off. And that's sad, isn't it? Yes. Pratting against us malicious words. Diotrephes was attempting to completely destroy the effectiveness of the apostles, and especially the apostle John. John says, when I get there, I'm going to deal with him. I'm going to speak out against him. I'm going to let it be known that this man is using malicious words. And he talks about he's going to have to excommunicate him most likely to get him out of the picture because he's destroying the church. Now, all we really know about Diotrephes, he wanted to control the church. John denounced his refusal to have anything to do with other spiritual leaders and his slander of the, their leaders, his bad example in refusing to welcome other gospel teachers and his attempt to excommunicate those that opposed his leadership Sins like pride, jealousy, slander are still present like was in Diotrephes day in our day. And when a leader makes a habit of encouraging sin and discouraging right actions, he has to be stopped. Yeah. If nobody speaks up, great harm comes to that church. You have to confront sin in the church. If we try to avoid it, it only grows and gets worse. A true Christian leader is a servant he is not a dictator. He wants to serve the Lord like a sh shepherd would serve the sheep. Yeah. That's a true pastor. That's a true leader in the Lord. Verse number 11. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil uh, will have not seen God. John warns the congregation to follow good servants of the Lord Avoid those who were evil liars. Diotrephes had set a bad example and would have been put under the church discipline for these unrighteous acts of hatred. You can call John the apostle of love, and he was the apostle of love, but Jesus called him a son of thunder. I believe he had a temper when he needed it. And I think they had a big thunderstorm when he got to the church. Because he was going to deal with this man who was tearing the church up. And it's too bad other churches don't deal with diatrophies because they can wreck a church if they're permitted to do so. I went to the store the other day and I was only there about five minutes. And when I came up, there was a motorcycle cop there riding a parking ticket. So I went up to him and I said, come on, couldn't you give a guy a break? He ignored me and continued riding the ticket. So I called him a pencil naked Nate Nazi. He didn't like that a bit. He glared at me and started writing another ticket for bald tires. Then I called him a horse face. He didn't like that either. He finished the second ticket and put it in his car. And, and he started writing a third ticket. This went on about 20 minutes. And the more I abused him, the more tickets he wrote. And then I said, I don't care. My car's parked around the corner. <laughs> Not really, I didn't do that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. But the verse begins the introduction of the condemnation of Demetrius in verse number 12. Now, Gaius was to imitate Demetrius as the correct role model for the church. Now, you've got three different men in the church. Number one is Gaius. Gaius was a great Christian. Number two, Diotrephe. Seeing this man in action, and John knew this man had love in his heart for other people, 
and obedience to spread the word of God. John knew his record was great. Paul records Demetrius to Gaius hospitality. As well. So we know nothing about Demetrius except that he carried the letter from John to Gaius. The book of Acts mentioned a silversmith named Demetrius, but we don't think he's the same one as found in this epistle. But when you move on in verse number 13, John says this. John says, I had many things to write, but I will not write with ink and pen right now. In other words, John was planning on visiting the church, and he says he's not going to write it out, but deliver it in person. Then in verse 14, But I trust I shall shortly see thee, and we shall speak face to face. Peace be unto thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. John says that you trust those who are following Jesus Christ, but those who are not following Jesus Christ, don't you put your trust in them. So I had three men. Gaius, the great disciple. Demetrius, another common uh, disciple, disciple that was a great man. But then you had Diotrephes. He was the second man, and he's the one that was causing trouble. Three men passed before us in this little epistle. Christianity was on trial in the first century. Two of these men who were mentioned in this epistle, they're genuine believers, they're real, and they're wonderful children of God. One is a delightful brother. Another one is a dependable brother. But the third one is a dictator and a phony. May I say to you, the gospel walked in shoe leather, the first century of the Roman Empire, and it got right down to where the rubber meets the road. In our energy and in our day, let's take the gospel of Christ where the shoe leather meets the road and tell everybody, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Yes, and when you do that, you're doing the work that Gaius was doing, Demetrius was doing, and you're avoiding what Diotrephes was doing because he was set on destroying the church of God. Let's bow our heads in prayer and heads are bowed and eyes are closed. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, maybe you'd say, Preacher, just pray for me. Yes, I've got a special burden. God knows all about it. Be my prayer partner tonight. I'd be glad to. Anyone like that should slip a hand up. Hands are lifted all around the building tonight. The Lord knows the need of your heart. Father, we come tonight. We pray that you'll bless each one here. Lord, I pray that God will just take each one that had a hand raised. Meet the need, whatever it is. Nothing's too hard for you, Lord. Help us to always be on guard to look after those that would hurt the church and look after those who would try to destroy the church, Lord, and Build up the saints of God, those that love the church. And Father, we thank you for giving us wisdom. Thank you for giving us power. And thank you, Lord, for giving us compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stand our feet while heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Charles, play softly. If you want to come down around the altar, you feel free to come.
Y'all didn't do the camera. You didn't do the camera. 